Hi, this is Brad Bolaños. In this video, I'm going to be showing a high voltage probe that I bought off of uh, Amazon. I ordered the VP uh, 10,007. I think that's the older uh, model. And it's actually the DP 700. Although the model in here says DP 10009. So if you buy it, the new one is the DP 700, I believe. That's the one. Now, this is a high voltage differential probe. And if you're a power engineer, uh, that's a must have piece of equipment that you need, especially if you're uh, designing and troubleshooting H bridges where you want to measure the VGS of your top MOSFETs, then uh, you need a good uh, high voltage differential probe. Now, with GANFETs, with the switching speeds going faster and faster, you have to be concerned that your probe has high enough uh, common mode rejection ratio. And you probably need uh, a CMRR close to 80 or above. The higher, the better. At, let's say, 100 megahertz or even higher. There's several products out there already. Uh, the ISO view is one of them. Uh, there's, I believe, uh, optical uh, differential probe from uh, Siglent, I believe, and some other ones. Uh, also from PMK, those are the other ones. Now, what I'm interested in is uh, I'd like to measure the common mode rejection ratio. That's a very important parameter. Uh, because if you don't have enough common mode rejection ratio, you're, you're going to be measuring the common mode voltage. In other words, uh, on, a, on your top MOSFET, the gate and the source, they're both swinging up and down. And you want to filter that, that voltage, the common mode that's swinging up and down. And what you want to do is read the differential voltage. In other words, the gate to the source. So that's where these come in pretty good. Now, typically the, the uh, specification on these, they have a CMRR about uh, 80 dB at DC, and then they roll off. So I want to measure it. I'm going to measure it with the Bodhi 100. And uh, I believe there's a video where Dave Jones measured the common mode rejection ratio. However, he only uh, used the Bode 100. The Bode 100 has an amplifier that will give you a, a, a higher signal. So I'm going to be using the, it's called the B amp 12. Basically, it gives you 12 uh, dBs of uh, gain. So anyway, so that's the purpose of this video. Hopefully, you'll, you'll find this informative. Now for the measurement. Okay, let me talk a little bit about this differential probe. This is a 700 uh, volt peak uh, capable, and you can switch it down to 70 volts. So if you were measuring a differential voltage within those range, then this is the, uh, the probe that you need. And, uh, and then the final would be that it has a frequency bandwidth of 100 megahertz. Okay, so here I have the test set up. I have the Bode 100, and I'm feeding the output of the Bode 100 into the B amp 12. So this will give you a little bit more output signal. And so basically it just amplifies it. So here's the output. And I'm using a T right there. The T is then fed it to channel one. 
and then I'm using a DNC to a post, banana post, and these are my connection. Uh, these are the IC terminals. Uh, I'm basically I'm using these little terminals, and I can slip them into the 22 gauge wire. And actually, these actually make pretty good probing. You can add uh, little jumpers to your VGS gate and source, and you can connect these without having to use the big uh, um, alligator probes or the, the micro river probes. But anyway, these are, I highly recommend you guys use these and make a little extension for that. Anyway, so the signal. I'm connecting it to the top side. That way the signal is on both the top and the bottom. In other words, the positive and negative. And I want to see how much of that signal actually gets attenuated by uh, the high voltage uh, differential probe. Now that signal is then fed into the second one. So you're basically doing a comparison of the output of this versus the output of your high voltage differential probe so that's what the common mode of rejection ratio measurement is okay here i have the body 100 and before i can do a measurement basically i'm going to do a gain measurement i have to calibrate uh, the body 100 so what I do is I connect channel 1 and channel 2 to the output and I should get a nice straight flat uh, line. If you notice it's curving down so we want to calibrate that out. So we go to perform new calibration. Press the gain calibration. And then we check the calibration. Okay, so it's nice and flat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect uh, instead of a cross, I'm just going to connect both leads of the of the mig sig to the positive. So basically, they're going to be measuring a common mode on both the positive and negative probes of the mig sig. And basically, we want to see how much it'll reject the common mode noise. Okay, so now I have it connected there. And I can increase and go to 4 dBm. There's a little bit of noise here. Okay. And I'm also looking here, make sure that I don't overdrive it. If I overdrive it, okay, let's see there, it overdrives. So let me go back to 6. And the more signal you have, the less noise you're going to see in this clock right there. See, that's a little bit too much. So let's go to 4 dBm. So channel 2 doesn't have any attenuation, but the receiver 2 or channel 2 has 30 dB attenuation. Okay. Oh, let me check one more thing, just be sure. Since the probe is a 20 to 1, or time sex, make sure that that's at 20 to 1, so it is correct. So, if we measure at 1 megahertz, we got about negative uh, 79.5 dB of uh, attenuation, which is very good. Okay, so then we can go up to, which is right there, at 1 uh, megahertz. So you can tell that there's a pole, or actually a zero. Okay, and you can see that it's breaking. And then at around 
10 megahertz, uh, the attenuation, I'm go ahead and type in 10 here. Okay, so the attenuation at 10 megahertz is 51 dB. So that would be at that point. And then at the end uh, of my, uh, the bandwidth of my body 100, I am reading about 41 dB of a uh, negative, uh, 41 dB of attenuation. So typically, if you're going to be uh, looking at uh, GAN fits, you want as much uh, common mode uh, range as possible. Uh, and at the highest frequency. Now, I'm just curious. I'm going to go ahead and put the 5 megahertz uh, bandwidth limiter. So it has the 5 megahertz bandwidth. Now you're limiting the bandwidth, but you do get a little bit more common mode attenuation. Uh, the 10 is almost 60 dB and the 50 megahertz is negative 55 so that's interesting so I'm going to click it off oh let me go ahead and save this and then this should be with the without the 5 megahertz filter so there is a difference when you put in the 5 megahertz filter. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test a, uh, a different um, differential probe and I'm interested to see what is the difference. Okay, now I have the Pico Technology uh, differential probe. This one has a bandwidth of uh, 100 megahertz and it's battery operated. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. It doesn't have a auto adjust. You have to adjust uh, any offset through the little uh, trim pot right there. And this one is double the high voltage that the MIGSIG is capable of. That one, uh, the MIGSIG goes up to 700. This one goes up to 1400. So I'm going to test at times 10 and uh, I'll just test it at times 100. I'm sorry. So I'll do that. And here I have it connected again just to the positive side. I'm interested what is the common mode of rejection ratio. Okay, so I have it connected. So now, since it's a 200, times probe, make sure. Oh, sorry, it's uh, times 100. Okay. Okay, so that this is a common mode range, common mode rejection range. I'll turn these off. Actually, I'll turn so this should be the mixic. So there is quite a bit of attenuation or less attenuation on the Pico. I'm just curious, does it get better at lower frequencies? So let me go to 100. It does start off at 80. 
and then it rolls up. Interesting. So we have this type. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, so at the higher frequency, at about 100 kilohertz, it's around 50-ish, uh, 52. One megahertz right there says 51, negative 51 dB. 10 megahertz, 56 dB. And negative 56 at 50 megahertz. So it looks flat here, and then there's some resonant frequencies. So basically on both, uh, the differential once you get past 100 no 10 megahertz you have these uh peaks and valleys which are probably resonances uh in terms of rejecting the mix it seems to have a much uh better capabilities in rejecting common more uh noise so there you have it anyway Hope you find this uh, video useful. If you like it, uh, subscribe, thumbs up. Any questions, you can send them to my email. Thank you for watching.